You're welcome this morning. Please, let's open our Bibles to First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. Then we'll jump to First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 19. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 19. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. And First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 19. Verse First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2 says, We give thanks to God how many times? We give thanks to God always for you all. Making mention of you in our prayers. We give thanks to God how many times? It's like I stand there and I say I'm giving thanks for you always. For you all. Is it that there are no thing, nothing happening to this, all these people Paul was referring to that is does not deserve praise? Is it that everybody Paul is referring to are enjoying every bit of their lives? Huh? Is it possible? Huh? It's not possible. There will be one or two that are going through one difficult times. Am, am I correct? There will be one or two that are going... And if it is all of them, it can be always. Huh? Look at it. We give thanks to God always for you all. Now, if you're giving thanks for a crowd of people, always, for all of them, then that praise is not the normal regular praise. It can be the regular thanks. Because you cannot tell me that these all people are having nice time all the time, always, and there's not one out of them who is crying you see, sometimes in church, especially the Pentecostals, we are very hypocritical. And I, and, I, and I take responsibility because I've been there too before. Until God saved me and delivered me. We act all the time, which is good, we act in faith. But we also, not just only act, we don't even talk about the fact that sometimes things don't go too well. As beautiful, as young as we are in this church. In the next few days, we're going to be having the week, uh, week, uh, uh, the service of song for one of us that died at 50. I know in some church, they don't want you to know somebody is dying, even though people are dying. I know in some faith-based Pentecostal church, we don't want people to know people are dying, but yet people are dying. We don't want you to know that when we organize crusade and 20 people walk into that crusade with sickness, it's not only the 20 that are healed. Maybe only 10 got healed. We want you to believe that it's all who came who got healed. And the reason why the church, especially in Nigeria, the body of the Pentecostal church have become like that, is because we try to act like we are God to the people. And that there is nothing you put in my hand that will not prosper. I, I think we should face some realities this morning. But I thank God that I was delivered many years ago. And so when that our sister died, and the family requested they wanted to have a service of song. I said, we're going to have it in church. If we have the responsibility to name a child as a church, we also have the responsibility to bury whoever dies. <laughs> I know you don't like this kind of message. I know you, you feel very bad that this is the service you came. You have just come for second service. But you see, God wants you to hear the other side of the story. So you can have a balanced faith. And stop pretending and come out of the hypocrisy of the church. If the church is that that we have painted it, why are we still in problem with the crowd? Why are we the headquarters of poverty? It's because, you see, we have actually branded our own Christianity. It's a branded Christianity. 
whereby we extract from the Bible the ones we want. And we live in the Bible the ones we don't want. And we've been told that Christianity is a bed of laws. But we're not told that roses have tongues. Roses near go. That if you're going to have a bed of rose, it will come with some tongues. Are you following me? So we are only giving, you see, our faith is half-baked faith. What is half-baked faith? Faith that has learned to claim. Claim things. Claim blessing. Claim uh, prosperity. Claim favor. Claim healing. We have not been told that faith can endure. The coping faith. Are you following what I'm saying? That when you pass through the valley of the shadow of death, what you need at that time is not just the claiming faith, you need the coping faith. You need the enduring faith. In the book of Hebrews 6, verse 12, he said, follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've come to submit to you that it's not every time you ask God for a thing and you get it at the same time, the same time you're asking. And I submit to you that is, it is not every time you ask God for a thing, you get it instantly. Are you following me? So, every time you come across those things in your life, that you have to wait to get, you need an enduring faith. Hello? You need to balance your faith with what? Patience. So what do you do while you're waiting for that thing? You are in praise. I, I didn't tell you my topic this morning. My topic, I want to talk to you about... <laughs> I, did not even, I, I, I didn't tell you my topic. Thank God for everything. Everybody say, thank God for everything. Say, I'm thanking God for everything. Say it very well, please. Say it again. You see, so we have breeded, we've been breeding Christians who doesn't thank God for everything. We thank God for the good and the beautiful. We blame God for the ugly and complain about the ugly. Because many people have been told that if you go through difficult times and you have some ugly situations in your life, it's because you don't have faith or you're not praying enough or, you're, or the church you're attending does not have anointing. <laughs> you know, Africa, African Christians are very funny. They say, And so we are looking for what is not lost. Not knowing that God has been faithful. I know there are people who listen to this message that are going through some difficult times. In that difficult situation, God is still faithful. That you are still standing in the midst of furnace of fire, it is God's faithfulness. That you're passing through fire, oh, although nobody wants to pass through fire, but that you're passing through fire is not consuming you, it is God's faithfulness. Nobody wants to pass through the waters, but that you're passing through the waters, it has not overflown you, it is God's faithfulness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when we begin to have this balanced faith, we begin to enjoy God even more. Are you following what I'm saying? I've seen believers, because things are not working, they just turn everything upside down. You say why? They say, no, 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 something is wrong. It's not every time that something is wrong. It's not every time that something is wrong. It could be that something is wrong sometimes, but it's not every time. In John chapter 9, they came across a man that was born blind. And they were still asking Jesus, who sinned? Because they've been taught that every time there is... They've been, that's how they've been taught. So people live all their life in condemnation. And some of us that can act properly, we act like we've never had your kind of problem before. So you sit there all the time and say, Father, if you can make my life look like that of Pastor Adioye, I would really love it. Not knowing that I have some few ugly situations too. 